You are watching ABC 7 News at 5.30. Consolidation may be back on the table for the Venice Fire Department. The department is facing financial issues and the city could save some money by having the department join Sarasota County. If not, the city would have to add a fire tax for residents, make major cuts in the department, or even raise property taxes to continue funding an independent fire department. ABC 7's Rebecca Fernandez is live in Venice. Now, Rebecca, how much money are we talking about here? Jacqueline Scott, well, residents who have studied the budget believe that the city could save millions of dollars if they combine firefighter efforts with Sarasota County. As taxpayers, we're tired of being told we have a funding problem with the fire department. This was Mike Rafferty, a longtime resident of Venice, speaking to city council at last week's budget hearing on behalf of thousands of homeowners. Please, let the voters decide on how we want to fund fire and rescue services. It's clear council is split on this issue, and it's equally clear we all need to be properly educated on the pros and the cons of consolidation. Although it's too late to decide on a solution for this year's budget, Rafferty is asking the city to consider consolidating its fire department with Sarasota counties in the near future. Talk about fire consolidation, fire department consolidation has been going on for several years now. And that's because for two decades now, the city's fire department and Sarasota County have shared responsibilities for South County. The idea of consolidating the two has been shut down in the past, but after long discussions and hearing what residents had to say this time around, the city says it may have found a way they would do it. And we're looking at now is still a consolidation, but it's a reverse consolidation. Instead of the fire department, fire engines moving to the county, it would be the city taking over the ambulance service. Mayor Hollick says this would supplement the funding needed because there would only be one fire chief overseeing everything versus now where there are city and county positions. Public safety is, is something you just can't put a price on. Either way that it gets integrated, uh, it's, it's going to serve the people of the city better. And while all this discussion is going on, the Venice Fire Department says they have no comment on what their future fire services may be. Live tonight in Venice, Rebecca Fernandez, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Back to you guys. Rebecca, thank you. Today marks the one year anniversary of the shooting rampage in Las Vegas. Dozens killed, hundreds more injured. The city hosting a number of events to remember that tragedy. John Lawrence has more. The mood in Las Vegas has been somber, yet hopeful over the past few days. Hard to believe it's been a year. Survivors of the 2017 shooting at the Route 91 Harvest Music Festival have been gathering. Standing stronger and standing together. They are mourning those lost and trying to recover from that tragic night one year ago. I need that comfort, I need that support, I need the love, which I get from here. 58 people were killed in what is the deadliest mass shooting incident committed by one person in modern U.S. history. May the Lord look upon you with kindness. On Sunday, an interfaith service on hope, healing, and transformation. When I got the call last October, all I could think about is this is my city. This is our city. They need me, and I'm going in there to help. The marquees along the legendary Las Vegas Strip are set to go dark Monday night to honor the victims. It's very strange to miss 58 people you never met. I think about who they were, what they, what they were, what they did. Um, it's healing for me. I just needed to be with people that understood what happened and what was going on. Police say the shooter was found dead in his hotel room of an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. No motive was ever confirmed. I'm John Lawrence reporting. A former star football player at Venice High School has been arrested for a second time for selling cocaine. Sarasota County Sheriff's deputies say on September 21st, Jeremy Trebles Jr. sold three pieces of rock cocaine to an undercover detective for $50. At the time, the 18-year-old was not arrested because deputies were conducting a larger investigation. Six days later, Trebles was taken into custody and charged with sale of cocaine, violation of probation, and driving while on a suspended license. Troubles was first arrested on charges of selling cocaine back in January. 
Authorities say a man who forced a Florida emergency room to go on lockdown this after this morning is dead. According to Orlando police, an ambulance carried a 35 year old man to Orlando Regional Medical Center this morning. They say that man claimed to have a gun and told police that he was a suspect in a homicide. Police report the man made a move during negotiations and officers responded by opening fire. The suspect was shot and killed. Investigators now say it looks like that man did not have a gun. All during the, the negotiation, he was making movements consistent with uh, having a firearm and at times becoming aggressive and then at some point uh, made moves very consistent with retrieving a firearm from within his waistband. Three officers were involved in that shooting and have since been put on paid administrative leave. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement is investigating that shooting. Let's change gears now and uh, check on our warm weather here on the Sun Coast again today <laughs> on October 1st. Here's Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob? Well, the temperature right now 89 degrees and the heat index at 97. That's right, 97 here on the 1st of October. Winds out of the north northeast at 9. Good afternoon, everyone. We have a few showers around right now that are moving pretty quickly off to the west. They've been popping up here and there. That's due to the heat of the day. There's not much set up in terms of a sea breeze, and so it looks as though uh, these showers will uh, pop up and then move off quickly into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, when the sea breeze is around, obviously it stops everything, and then the two converge, and the storms get a little bit more intense in terms of generating lightning and heavy rainfall, uh, but we've seen a few brief showers near Northport and stretching off toward Englewood, pushing off uh, toward the west at 10 to 15, so expect a brief shower here and there. Scattered about through this evening, as I mentioned, nothing too intense. It doesn't appear at this point. Uh, tomorrow, a little bit better chance to see a little bit more storms around, but I still think that sea breeze is going to have a hard time getting going in the afternoon. Uh, it may get pinned right near the coast tomorrow, which would give us a little bit better chance for a few stronger cells, but for the time being, expect a few brief showers. This little trough of low pressure, if you will, continues to drift off toward the uh, southwest, and on top of that, a little bit more moisture will come into play tomorrow. That'll quickly move out, though, by uh, Wednesday, and things will be back to uh, not many storms around, and then Thursday it comes back again as some more moisture moves into the picture. But way out there in the Atlantic, we still have Leslie still spinning around, heading to the south right now. And in the uh, old system that we saw last week, Kirk has been beat up by a lot of strong upper level winds. Still, though, there's a lot of deep convection down there. We'll keep an eye on it for you. This becomes a favorite area for development here in October. So we'll watch it closely. Back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. Investigators say an autopsy has confirmed the body found in a North Carolina creek last week is a missing six year old boy. The remains of Maddox Rich were found last Thursday in a creek. The boy was reported missing six days earlier. Gastonia authorities say he was last seen on a walk with his father and another adult. His disappearance led to a search of the park and surrounding areas. His funeral is now set for Friday. The FBI continues to investigate. The FBI investigation into accusations against Brett Kavanaugh is officially underway. While lawyers for Christine Blasey Ford say so far agents have not spoken to her, the FBI has talked with Kavanaugh's second accuser. Investigators do not plan to interview Kavanaugh's classmates who contradict his testimony about his drinking. Relevant given that there clearly was drinking going on, at least it's alleged uh, at the party? No, I think uh, you're trying to portray him as a stumbling, bumbling, drunk, gang rapist. Also not being questioned, Julie Swetnick, who claims in a sworn statement she witnessed a drunk Kavanaugh mistreat women at parties in high school. Kavanaugh strongly denies all of these allegations. Soccer star Cristiano Ronaldo is accused of rape. According to a lawsuit filed Friday, a woman claimed she was attacked by Ronaldo in 2009. The suit alleges that the soccer star apologized after the assault, saying he was usually a gentleman. The woman says Ronaldo and his associates took advantage of her and made her sign a settlement and a non-disclosure agreement. According to her, she received $375,000 to keep quiet about the alleged incident. She wants to have the settlement and the agreement now voided. Companies headquartered in California can no longer have all male corporate boards. A new bill requires all publicly traded firms in that state to have at least one woman on their board of directors by the end of next year. If there are already five directors in a company, two women must be added by the end of 2021. For six or more directors, at least three women are required to be added by 2021. 
If companies do not follow that new mandate, they will face a penalty. Still to come tonight on your Suncoast News, a highly contagious disease that has more than doubled in newborns in the U.S. in the last five years. And a historic Manhattan department store closing its doors. We'll tell you when you can find some major deals. Reorganizing a space in your home? Save up to 15% on our premium finishes during the California Closets Autumn Upgrade event. Contact us today for a free design consultation. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. Blue 32, Blue 32, ha ha! It's the Ghetto Gridiron Challenge. The game's on to sell 2,000 vehicles. 12 teams compete for the number one spot. Score a great deal at every Ghetto dealership. Buy with zero down. Make no payments for 90 days. Choose from 14 of your favorite brands all on sale. Who will make it to the end zone? You decide. Rush to a Ghetto location near you or visit Ghetto.com. Ghetto's got it. The Player Center presents the wild Broadway season opener, Annie, Get Your Gun. There's no business like show business. This slice of magical American musical theater will thrill you with the classic tunes of Irving Berlin. Call the Player Center at 365-2494 or visit us at theplayers.org. Annie, Get Your Gun, September 18th through October 7th. Let's go on with the show. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was. I can tell you that you will not find a finer, more professional team of clinicians anywhere in the world. Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The More Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the More Space Place. Know your land, know your prey. Saturdays at 5.30 and Sundays at 2 on the ABC7 live stream. Reorganizing a space in your home? Save up to 15% on our premium finishes during the California Closets Autumn Upgrade event. Contact us today for a free design consultation. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. An alarming statistic among babies, the number of newborns with syphilis has reached a 20-year high in the United States. Reed Binion has more. Congenital syphilis is passed on by the mother during pregnancy or delivery. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the number of cases more than doubled from 2013 to 2017, when the recorded cases hit 918. The CDC says this even outpaces the national increase of sexually transmitted diseases. Arizona, California, Florida, Louisiana, and Texas accounted for 70% of the newborn syphilis cases. Experts say they aren't surprised by the dramatic increase, since the number of adults diagnosed with syphilis has been rising. Eight out of ten pregnant women who have untreated syphilis will pass it on in utero. And that's what worries doctors. Left untreated, it could lead to stillbirth, a deadly infection for the infant, and other medical issues. The CDC recommends expectant mothers get screened early on in their pregnancy, then again around 28 weeks and at delivery. Syphilis can be easily treated with penicillin, which is safe for the fetus. For today's Health Minute, I'm Reed Binion. Now your ABC7 First Alert weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. 
Time lapse of the Casey Key webcam. Notice the color of the water as we move through time here since uh, just just before noon today. It looks rather brownish right there and that east wind you can see kind of patchy in areas and then all of a sudden it kind of moves off toward the west there and clears out a little bit. That's the story. We've had this east wind and it may be carrying it offshore, but it's still out there. And if the winds switch around to a west direction, uh, that could pose another problem uh, for inland areas. Obviously, we still have the problem, but uh, could make it worse. Uh, some rainfall here. A little trough of low pressure continues to extend out here into the Atlantic. This is getting closer to us tomorrow, and it will give us a better chance for some showers and storms to be a little bit more widespread tomorrow afternoon and evening by no stretch of rain out, but uh, we will see a better chance of some activity, I think, in the afternoon and evening. Uh, right now, all that heavy rainfall is to the north of us. We've had a few brief showers here. Uh, one of the benefits of these showers, cooling things down a little bit. Temperatures have uh, cooled in Northport and also near Venice and uh, places uh, where they had a few brief showers near Arcadia, but Arcadia is mainly to the south and east thereof. You can see those uh, brief showers right there moving on through and had one or two near Parish, but that's been about it. It's been pretty quiet out there as far as any heavy rainfall goes this afternoon. And way out there in the Atlantic, Leslie's still hanging around and getting better organized as it heads to the south. This storm appears to be headed toward hurricane status. It's looking more organized. You can see some outflow and the banding feature setting up on uh, both sides there and deep convection developing in the middle. The next storm up is Michael, followed by Nadine and Oscar. There's still a chance we could get uh, one or two more storms before the official end of the hurricane season. Long range model European is showing something popping up uh, near Cuba and then heading off toward the Bahamas in about 10 days from now. Too long, uh, too, too far out to worry about at this point. But uh, that same system is expected to move off into the Atlantic and sweep some cooler air away. I've checked the long range models. And that's about it. Uh, that's all we can hope for is that uh, possibility of some cooler weather coming in, not until after, say, October 10th, 11th, uh, the, uh, this month, so a couple weeks from now, basically. 90 in uh, Brayton, it's 88 in Miami City, 989 in Northport now. Uh, temperature of Venice is coming back up now, 96, that's what it feels like there. 95 in Miami City, Northport, you're at 96, the Gulf water temperature at 86 degrees. Currently at the airport, it feels like 97, and our high today warmed 3 degrees above average and 3 degrees shy of the record, 91 degrees at the Sarasota Brayton Airport. And as far as the low goes this morning, it was 75. That too running high. We should be in the low 70s, though, by uh, Friday morning and Saturday morning. So the forecast tomorrow calls for another hot day with an east wind and a better chance to see some late-day showers and thunderstorms. You'll see a few more around town. Again, not everyone's going to get the rainfall, and it looks as though uh, that pattern will drop back off to dry on Wednesday, back up to uh, moist again on into uh, looks like uh, Thursday. Well, the jet stream is really riding high. We need this uh, to come down to cool us off. That isn't happening, and it's not going to happen anytime soon with basically a ridge of high pressure over the uh, southeast United States. For boaters, winds out of the northeast at 10 knots. Seas will be running two feet. Just a light chop out there. So generally easterly to northeast winds throughout the day with no real uh, sea breeze kicking in. 40% chance for late-day storms tomorrow. It drops to 20 on Wednesday. Back up to 50 on Thursday, Friday, football Friday night, looking good again. And then uh, back to a chance for showers and storms continuing on Sunday and Monday of next week. Back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. Let's take a look at your first alert traffic for the drive home. Right now, we are seeing a few backups. The northbound lane of 301 in Bradenton is slow moving. The westbound lane on uh, State Road 64 is also at a complete standstill, which is causing some backup in that area. Scott? General Electric CEO is out after barely a year on the job. GE announcing today Lawrence Culp will replace John Flannery. Culp is credited for leading the turnaround at the industrial manufacturing company Danaher. The change is effective immediately and it comes on the same day the company revealed bleak financial news. GE warning its 2018 profit will fall short because of weaker performance at its power division. Well, it's the end of an era for a Manhattan department store. Lord & Taylor will be closing its doors for good after the holiday season. The century-old store is already starting to say goodbye at its flagship location on Fifth Avenue. The good news is that shoppers can look forward to some major deals. Lord & Taylor launching its store closing sale as soon as this Thursday. And I might have to take a take a quick peek at that and see what kind of deals I can get my hands on. Good excuse to go to New York. There you Perfect go. Perfect trip, yeah. <laughs> Entertainment news is next. 
Reorganizing a space in your home? Save up to 15% on our premium finishes during the California Closets Autumn Upgrade event. Contact us today for a free design consultation. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. The final 2018 Honda SUV clearance is now. During our model year in clearance sale, get Honda SUVs awarded the best SUV brand for 2018 with clearance pricing, payments, and financing. New CRVs on clearance, just $2.59 a month. Pilots with clearance financing, 0.9 for 60 months. This is your last chance for Honda SUVs on clearance. This week at your local Honda dealer. A policeman stopped. Yeah, it was the lady parked next to me. I called my wife. My dad got up in the middle of the night. My neighbor helped me out. I called a tow truck. Anyone can jumpstart your car, but for replacing a dead battery and installing it for free, there's no one like Batteries Plus Bulbs. <laughs> I'll install it myself. I'd like you to do it. Visit BatteriesPlus.com for a store near you. This is an important message for anyone with Medicare. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan that combines hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage together with extra benefits that may include dental, vision, hearing aids, and much more. Some of these plans have a $0 monthly premium regardless of your income. That's right. For one low plan premium, or in some cases a $0 premium, you may be able to get coverage for your hospital visits, doctor appointments, prescription drugs, routine dental care, eyeglasses and contact lenses, hearing aids, and possibly more. Today may be the first time you've heard about this type of Medicare plan. The advisors at the Medicare.com helpline are licensed insurance agents who will explain more when you call. Call now to see if you qualify. Call the number on your screen now. Call now to see if you qualify for these benefits. You worked hard for your Medicare. Now is the time for your Medicare to work hard for you. Not affiliated with or acting on behalf of any government agency or program. I'm Deshauna Barber. In 2016, I was proud to win the title of Miss USA. What makes me just as proud is my service in the U.S. military. In the service, a soldier gains skills and learns values like discipline and leadership. That makes them an asset to any business that hires them. If you're an employer on behalf of Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, remember to hire smart and bet on a vet. Visit saluteheroes.org or call this number to learn more. Reorganizing a space in your home? Save up to 15% on our premium finishes during the California Closets Autumn Upgrade event. Contact us today for a free design consultation. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. A long-running musical and a new movie have both set some records. David Daniel has a Hollywood Minute. The original Broadway cast recording of Hamilton hit the Billboard 200 album chart back in October of 2015, and it's never left. In fact, it spent most of that time in the top 40, 145 weeks, passing Adele's 21 for the longest top 40 run since 1991, when the Billboard chart began using Nielsen music data. Does it feel different to be up there without a rope? It's obviously like much higher consequence. Free Solo has gone where no documentary has before. The film about the first free solo rock climb of Yosemite's El Capitan opened on four screens, earning $300,000. 75,000 per screen, the best average ever for a documentary and the best of any movie this year. You feel like you don't belong here. You don't. Not long after Fox dropped the first trailer for Dark Phoenix, announcing the X-Men movie would open next Valentine's Day, the studio changed course. Dark Phoenix is now scheduled to hit theaters next June, with Alita Battle Angel moving from this December to Phoenix's old February 2019 spot. And what about that prime December spot left by Alita? Fox says it'll release an as yet untitled Deadpool movie. Some speculate a PG-13 version of Deadpool 2. Whatever it is, we'll find out in less than three months. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Well, rapper Cardi B surrendered to police this morning to face charges in connection with an assault on two bartenders at a Queens strip club. She now faces misdemeanor charges in connection with the August 29th fight at Angel's Strip Club in Flushing. 
Cardi B is likely to receive a desk appearance ticket to appear in court at a later time. Detectives are still sorting out whether or not she was involved in that attack. Gwyneth Paltrow has tied the knot. 46-year-old actress sharing this photo on Instagram yesterday. She married television producer Brad Falchuk in the Hamptons on Saturday. They first met on the set of Glee back in 2010, where Falchuk co-created and Paltrow guest starred. She called him, quote, the man I was meant to be with. Paltrow was previously married to Coldplay frontman Chris Martin. Good for her. Glad to hear that for her. We'll be right back with more news. Stay with us. Thank you.